This is Deviance Lecture 2.1, Being Deviant. In this lecture, we're going to talk about specifically the symbols of deviance, content warnings surrounding homelessness, flag burning, discrimination, and both sex and sexuality. So let's first look at these symbols of deviance. And as you can tell, probably this is largely based on symbolic interactionism. Within the discipline of sociology, social theory generally falls into one of three categories. Structural functionalism, how do social structures work together? Symbolic interactionism, how do we create collective meaning? But, and also conflict theory, how is inequality in society perpetuated? Structural functionalism, that question of how do structures work together, um, is uh, due to the inherent assumptions of, quote, working together, functionalist theories tend to be less present when we're actually studying deviance. Thus, in this discussion, we're going to be focusing mainly on symbolic interactionism and conflict theory, so I didn't misspoke, speak slightly a slide ago. Many ideas about the cause of deviance and criminality in society focus on what is and is not common sense. The reality is that social scientific findings often do, often do not match common sense. Uh, so many of the ideas about homelessness, for example, are based on unscientific concepts of common sense, such as, well, the reason why somebody is homeless is because they don't have a job. So-called common sense explanations ignore elements of social construction. A social construction being defined as a component of our human world that has meaning because we say or agree that it has meaning. Constructionist perspectives of deviance concentrate on the meanings of that deviance and how people behave in keeping with those meanings. Theories that are based on this idea of social construction are therefore called constructionist. Here's an example, a big uh, visceral example of a social construction, money. Money has value because we as a society collectively say it has value. Just because something is a matter of social construction does not mean that it doesn't have real repercussions, however. Money is a social construct, but by explaining that to your landlord does not mean that you don't have to pay your rent. Rather than focusing on the causes of crime, constructionists emphasize the labeling process and the importance of labeling. And if you want more on that, you can look at labeling theory on lecture 1.1. Both deviant and non-deviant people are, in, are invoked in the labeling process. Involved, I mean, involved in the labeling process. Interaction between deviant and non-deviant then determine, is determined by the meanings people assign to deviant behavior and the reactions to that behavior. Do we get a big rise out of people if we are trying to be provocative by burning an American flag. If we're trying to be provocative and people scream and yell or whatever, that may actually encourage the person who is trying to provoke people into doing it more. Other perceptions of us are critical to how we interact with others and how we interact with society. Social identity is who others and who society thinks we are. And this is illustrated in this kind of old meme, but it, it shows it, the idea pretty well. Your personal identity is who you think you are. Your social identity can absolutely influence your personal identity. If everybody treats you like you're super cool and you're so, super smart, even if you aren't cool and smart, then you'll start to think that you're cool and smart, and maybe you'll act that way. On the other hand, if everyone treats you like you're dumb, you'll start thinking of yourself as not being intelligent, and then your behavior will also reflect that. Each of us holds many statuses, but sometimes a status takes over. This is called role engulfment. This occurs when an individual feels trapped in some particular role and powerless to leave it. Others may believe that the person is only that thing. So this concept of just a mom, 
this idea of role engulfment absolutely applies to many stay-at-home moms and stay-at-home parents in general where it's people see them as just take care taking care of kids almost all stay-at-home moms i i know and i actually did do a little research on this a couple years ago most of them have side things that they do um but that's not to say that just being a stay-at-home mom is nothing it's but it's definitely something that can cause us to think of a person as just a certain thing when a math status comes to engulf us it is said to be a master status a status that overtakes all other statuses deviant identities can absolutely become master statuses identities such as criminal or pervert or alcoholic or junkie but this also applies to members of stigmatized groups as well um, people will very often if they've been convicted of a crime not come out with the first thing they tell you oh by the way i just got out of prison right that's that that's very common for humans to do that's called masking behavior the person doesn't tell you that they just got out of prison because they want to continue to interact with you in a way that you would not normally interact with a prisoner. When we think of deviant individuals, we often think of what is called achieved deviance, which is defined as the intentional or deliberate activity on behalf of the rule breaker. So if you break the law, that, that is achieving achieved that's doing achieved de deviance if you become the neighborhood weirdo because of how you behave in the area remember deviance isn't necessarily crime that also is achieved deviance however some deviant identities are not tied to what people actually do this is called ascribed deviance it is attached by others to someone who is viewed as having a physical or visible impairment and individual the individual can acquire that status regardless of their behaviors or regardless of their wishes this coffin this concept is often applied to stigmatized groups so discriminated against groups right examples of ascribed deviance can be people who are disabled young black men are often treated in many areas as if they are inherently criminal and also trans people are also often uh, perceived as being inherently outsiders and inherently deviant. These are all examples of ascribed deviance. Discredited deviants, uh, please note the spelling difference between DV with a CE and a NTS. Uh, D-I-V-I-A-N-C-E is the behavior, but a deviant with a T is an individual. Individuals who have been caught and labeled for their trespasses, who find themselves in different situations from the discreditable. And then discreditable attitudes and behaviors um, could lead to a social censure and stigma if they become publicly known. These may not be expressed or performed in private and secret ways. So uh, there are let's let's cut the op cut this open a little bit in a couple different ways. So people who have been labeled as having the quality or doing the thing that we think isn't good, those are discredited deviants. But the behaviors that we would label as being in that way, those are discreditable actions right so uh, sexual behavior uh, could be enjoyable uh, but we don't usually walk around in among everyone we know talking about our sexual behavior similarly uh, mental health issues things such as uh, self-harm uh, behavior such as self-cutting that also is discreditable and someone can get away with not being discredited in doing that even though that can be quite dangerous so these the visibility or lack of visibility of these things isn't inherently bad it really depends on what the thing is thus a discredited deviant is likely to be an achieved deviant an ascribed deviant 
does not need to be discredited, right? A described, a, an ascribed deviant was born discredited, and usually ascribed deviants are part of stigmatized groups. And what makes up stigma and how do you get to be unstigmatized, that is a subject for another lecture. We're not saying that that's necessarily a good thing. We're talking about the social structure as it exists. Okay, that is it for this lecture. Let me know if you have any questions.